Following final confirmation of rocket readiness, the RD-180 engine and five Gem-63 solid rocket boosters ignite to produce more than two million pounds of thrust, lifting ULA's Atlas V rocket away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, the rocket begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure it experiences during flight. Atlas then reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. The addition of five solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, precisely augment the liftoff thrust of the Atlas V, giving it the power to deliver the payload to orbit. With their propellant expired approximately 96 seconds into ascent, the SRBs burn out, followed by jettison. Atlas's guidance system then begins steering towards the precise target in space. The Viasat-3 F2 satellite is encapsulated inside a 5-meter diameter payload fairing, which provides protection to the satellite during ascent. After crossing the Kármán line, entering space, the payload fairing is jettisoned. With the majority of propellant expended fighting against the force of gravity, the RD-180 engine shuts down and the booster stage separates. The rocket then begins second stage flight, weighing less than 7% of what it did at liftoff. With the first burn complete, the Centaur engine shuts down for a coast phase. ULA's high-performance Centaur then performs two additional firings of its RL-10 engine. Together, the three burns increase the transfer orbit altitude and reduce the orbital inclination relative to the equator. During the third and final burn, Centaur expends all of its cryogenic propellant, minimizing the time to final orbit for Viasat 3F2. Following the final shutdown of its main engine, Centaur releases the Viasat 3F2 satellite into geosynchronous transfer orbit, or GTO, to expand and enhance in-flight connectivity for aviation passengers, exceed performance, security, and resiliency for governments, enhance internet experience on board vessels, and help deliver fast, reliable internet to rural communities.